So I'll uh, complete the uh, convection heat transfer coefficient derivation uh, within the next 10-15 uh, minutes and then uh, we're going to start solving problems. Uh, the next three lectures, which will be the last for this uh, semester for heat transfer, they will act as uh, de facto review sessions because I'm just going to solve problems. Okay, so we will not have a separate review session like we had for the midterm or the, or the previous exams. Okay, these three lectures will be the review session essentially. All right? So from last time, uh, we ended up with the following four equations. I'll just briefly sketch out the procedure. So d u star d x star. This was the non-dimensionalized continuity equation. Then the reduced momentum equations. U star and uh, V star is this the second momentum equation uh, we discarded it based upon the order of magnitude approach and then the energy equation U star, Vt star, V star is 1 by Re, Pr, this was also a simplified version of the overall energy equation and I just want to point out that U star, U by U infinity, V star is V by U infinity and particularly T star <coughs> is T minus T S T infinity minus T S T S is the surface temperature T infinity is the fluid free stream temperature Surface of plate temperature infinity is free stream temperature. Re is uh, Reynolds number, and then Pr is the Prandtl number. We'll we'll see this uh, those two again. X star is X by L. Y star is Y by L. These are all for laminar flow or a flat plate. Okay, and I'll prescribe all of these conditions again uh, once we are done with the problem. We said that uh, we could use the Blasius uh, profile or the Blasius solution for fluid. equation, the first two, okay, the following are the substitutions that one makes, we define a parameter called eta, which is a function of both y and x, so this is y times u infinity, or nu x by, u infinity by nu times x, Hold to the power one by two. This is a, a this is called a similarity parameter. Then we define u and v as the following. We 
in terms of another variable psi, where psi is expressed as a function of this eta. Okay? Where psi is u infinity, f of eta. These are all the substitutions that one makes. We went over these uh, towards the end of lecture last time. You take all of these, you plug them into the first and the second equations, you end up getting an ordinary differential equation. Okay, so end up <coughs> with an ODE in F of eta. Okay? I'll not write the ODE again, we had it last time. You solve this ODE numerically, obtain f of eta, and if you obtain f of eta, you obtain psi, if you obtain psi, you know u and v, which gives us The last step in this setup is uh, taking all this, substituting this into the energy equation. I'm not going to go over the substitutions. I'll just list it out. And then look at the energy equation. You substitute for u star. You substitute for v star, t star as a function of eta. of eta as well. Eventually it turns out to be that way. Solve by substituting it into the energy equation, which is the last one. And this is called the Polhausen solution. We are not interested in the details of these. There's only one thing of interest that I want to present from this particular solution, which is what we're going to look at today, and we use that to solve problems. Okay. After going over all this, we end up obtaining the following for the gradient of the temperature. So eventually, dt star by d eta at eta is equal to 0 ends up being 0.332 Prandtl number to the power 1 by 3. Okay? <coughs> we want to use this to obtain the local heat transfer coefficient. So use this. H, the local heat transfer coefficient. And here are the steps that we will take to obtain that. And I think I started on that uh, towards the end of last lecture. We draw a control surface around the first layer of fluid that is stuck to the plate. So here is the plate. first layer of fluid. This layer of fluid is a static layer of fluid because the plate is not moving. Then you have the other layers. These are the moving fluid. This is a static layer. We draw the control surface in the following manner. So 
So this is our control surface. We see that there is conductive heat transfer through the static layer of fluid. So there is Q conduction to the fluid at y is equal to 0. And that is uh, y is equal to 0, which is the surface of the plate. This is converted onto the moving fluid layer. Q double prime convection. This is a local, so if you would like, you can call this as DQ. Because this is the local convective heat transfer. Okay, this is not over the entire length of the plate. That is an average heat transfer rate. So from basic uh, control uh, energy balance, so you see that the Q convection is at y is equal to zero through the static layer of the fluid. And if you write this out as equations, this is H Cs minus T infinity. Area is not important here. And this is minus Kf, where Kf is the thermal conductivity of the fluid. And then the temperature gradient, dt by dy, at y is equal to 0. This is where we stopped last class. And the whole aim is making use of, this is equation 1. This is equation 2. So somehow I have to make use of equation 1 and obtain the local heat transfer coefficient. If I obtain that, I integrate it over the length of the plate, I get the bulk heat transfer coefficient, I can find the total convective heat transfer rate. So look at this first. T and T star are related in the following way. So T star is T minus Ts, T infinity minus Ts, cross multiply, Ts is a fixed temperature, T infinity is a fixed temperature, so if I differentiate both sides I get dT is T infinity minus Ts dT star. Which I take and substitute into equation 2. So that H Ts minus T infinity is minus Kf instead of dT it's T infinity minus T S times dT star. So H is Kf dt star by dy at y is equal to 0, for which I'm going to use the chain rule and say that this is Kf dt star by d eta, at eta is equal to 0. And this is completely fine. D eta by dy. Look at the definition of eta. Eta is y times u infinity. Ux 
to the power 1 by 2. So d eta by dy is just that quantity in the square root. So that's one. That's taken care of. Then I also see the dt star by d eta at eta is equal to zero is given from the Polhausen solution, which is 0.32 or 0.332 times pr. So this is. And so after all the substitutions are done, here is what we have. So H is KF 0.332 PR to the power 1 by 3 and the nu by u by nu infinity, uh, u infinity by nu x to the power 1 by 2. So this is a good place to stop, but we don't like to write h, we would like to prescribe these in terms of non-dimensional numbers, which is a new self number. And so we bring in the local new self number definition. Which is n u x is h times x by k f. And if I make that substitution, so h becomes n u x times k f by x, which you promptly substitute back. So n u x k f by x is k f. on both sides. I bring the x and then I have an x to the power 1 by 2 so I rearrange everything. Is 0.332 random number to the power 1 by 3 and then I have in the brackets is nothing but the local Reynolds number, okay, because nu is nu by rho, so this is nothing but which is Rex 1 by 2. So we're done with the convective heat transfer derivation. This is the local one, okay. I'm going to summarize this for the following conditions. Okay, so we have Flat plate, laminar flow, so Re less than, I would like to be a little conservative and say 10 to the power 5, but typically you can go as high as 5 times 10 to the power 5. Okay, and so when I solve problems and specify which limit of the laminar flow, uh, uh, the critical number that I'll be using. Third thing, this is extremely important. This whole derivation has been done by assuming that the temperature of the plate is constant. Surface of the plate is constant. And for such a situation, your new self number 0.332 Rex PR to the power 1 by 3. So this is typically how the problem will be specified. Here is a flat plate laminar flow, temperature is constant, here is a new set number. Flat plate laminar flow, the heat flux is a constant, here is a new set number. That's a different derivation. 
we're not going to do that, obviously. So you will be prescribed a new cell number. What are your steps? Using this, you obtain the local heat transfer coefficient. H is NUX KF divided by X. Once you do that, for a flat plate, H bar is the following. Because we're looking at surface area, we're looking at the thickness, uh, consistent. Uh, it will cancel off when we have the differential area and the total area as well. So this is what you'll calculate, and then eventually, Q calculation is H times delta T. If you want to calculate the local heat transfer. Right, dq convection is h delta t. This is local rate, this is the average okay. So these are the steps. New set number is given to you. Calculate this, calculate that. Step four, step four. <clears throat> All right, problem. So we told the following flat plate. You can essentially ignore this sharp corner here as a leading edge. You can assume it to be nice and smooth. This has a thickness 10 millimeters. Zero point six meters is the total length. There is uh, heat generation taking place within the flat plate. Okay, so within the plate. Q dot, which is the volumetric heat generation rate or the energy generation rate, is positive. And then you have fluid flowing past this plate on the top at U infinity. T infinity. Here are the fluid properties. You are told that uh, T infinity is 15 degrees Celsius. Okay. U infinity is 1.8 meters per second. <coughs> then uh, we are given the uh, thermal conductivity of the plate and the fluid. So K F. F stands for fluid, KF is the thermal conductivity of the fluid, which is 0 0.0278 watts per meter Kelvin. And then K of the plate is also given to us, it is 0.3 watts per meter Kelvin. F stands for fluid. And then uh, you're given the kinematic viscosity for the fluid. Mu is uh, 1.725 times 10 to the power minus 5 meters square per second. For this problem, the parental number is directly given, but if it is not given, you can calculate it. Parental number is point. 709, this is given. If it is not given, here is a formula. Parental number is nu by alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity. Nu is given to us, but alpha needs a little more information. So this is nu kf by 
rho times c. Okay? Rho is a density, c is the specific heat capacity. In this problem, your work has been simplified, they have directly given this to you. It will not be so charitable later on. You will have to calculate this. Rho is density. C is the heat capacity. A specific heat capacity. Okay? So what are we supposed to do in this problem? You're told that the maximum temperature that the plate can withstand is 107 degrees Celsius. So T surface max 107 degrees Celsius. This is a design limitation of the plate. So you could think of this as uh, probably a silicon chip inside your computer. Obviously it doesn't get to 107 degrees, but 60, 70 degrees I can easily imagine. And you have fluid flowing past or air blown past that chip, what's going to happen is that there's going to be convection from the surface of the chip all the way onto the fluid that is flowing past. So you're told in this problem that the rate of convective heat transfer is uniform throughout the length of the plate And it is given to you, the magnitude of this is given to you as 420 watts per meter square. Okay, so Q convection is uniform across the length of the plate. It's uniform heat flux. Along the length of the plate. And you've got to understand if you're looking at a real silicon chip, it's a two-dimensional problem. This is just a one-dimensional problem here. Okay? So the analysis is doubly complicated there. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to see is this design feasible? That is, they're saying that based upon these conditions, they're giving you 1.8 meters per second. Temperature is 15 degrees for the free stream flow. The maximum temperature of the plate cannot exceed 107 degrees Celsius. And they're asking, okay, based on all this information given to you, is this a feasible design? If NUX, which is the local new cell number, is 0. 453 REX to the power 1 by 2 PR to the power 1 by 3 for uniform heat flux along the plate. And please notice the difference between this and what we had just derived, which was 0.332. PR to the power 1 by 3, RE to the power 1 by 2. The difference is in this constant here. And it doesn't look like a huge difference, 0 0.332 versus 0 0.453, but it changes the complete nature of the problem. I go from a problem where the temperature of the surface is constant throughout to a problem where the flux is constant throughout the length of the plate. They are two different, completely antithetical problems. Okay? All right, so that's the first thing. Second thing, I'm not sure if we will have time for it, but we will maybe come back to it on uh, Wednesday. Obtain the Q dot and uh, temperature distribution through the thickness of the plate. If we do not have time to complete the second part, I'll just post the solution for it so that I start off on a fresh page on uh, Wednesday. Yes, question. Is that 0.43 constant? Is that going to be every time the flux is constant or only for the specific problem? Only every time the flux is constant. Okay. So this is this is a generic uh, expression for 
laminar flow for uniform heat flux. Okay, so I should also mention this is for a laminar flow as well. Because what we will do on Wednesday is that I will give you two new cell numbers, one for laminar flow, one for turbulent flow. And it is possible that some regions of the plate may be in laminar flow, and if the plate is long enough, certain other regions might be in turbulent flow. The heat transfer coefficient is going to be completely different for both these portions. And we will see how that pans out. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this problem step by step. So first thing is that you are told the heat flux is constant at any point along the length of the plate, which tells me that if I look at the local heat flux, dq double prime, this is at some x location, okay, so at some x along the length of the plate, where x is the distance along the length of the plate, this is y. This is x. So at some x, some very small differential element dx, this is going to be dq double prime. But what do I know? I know that the heat flux is constant at any point along the length of the plate, which means that dq double prime convection is equal to 420. Does this make sense to everybody? At each and every point along the length of the plate, the heat flux is a constant. So I choose some random location, x along the length of the plate, and I say, okay, what is the local heat, heat flux? What is the local heat transfer rate? Is this guy divided by the small area dA? Forget the area. If it is constant along the length of the plate, it has to be the same at each and every point. Okay? So with this set, we can then say this is now H times Ts minus T infinity. <coughs> I want to see if there are any questions until this point. What am I interested in? I'm interested in the temperature on the along the length of the plate, right? So I can now say Ts minus T infinity is dq by h or ts is t infinity plus dq by h. So now comes the thinking part of the problem. Okay, so far this is just routine stuff. In the case that we derived, we said that the temperature along the length of the plate is constant. At any point, the temperature is Ts. In this particular problem, it should be quite obvious that because the value of H changes at each and every location along the length of the plate, this guy is no longer a constant, even though this is a constant. Even though dq double prime is a constant, because H keeps changing at each and every point along the length of the plate, your temperature is no longer a constant. Okay? So this tells us that Ts is changing at each location along the plate. So what should I do? I have to figure out what is the location along the length of the plate that is the hottest. Calculate the temperature at that particular location and then compare and see does it fall below this design criterion of 107 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is all this problem is about. So which means <coughs> obtain Ts at the hottest location 
along the length of the plate. And then compare with Vs max. I'm going to leave this figure here, but I'm going to erase all of these things. So to figure out where this uh, TS is going to be the hottest, where do you think it's going to be the hottest? Just a guess. T infinity is a constant, which means that T s is going to be the largest when h is going to be the smallest. Does this make sense to you? obviously in the denominator, so if I have that as a smaller, then I increase the S. So look at the definition of H. I write it in terms of the new self number. So H times X by N uh, by KF is N units. This is the basic definition of the new self number, which means that H is actually N U X multiplied by kf divided by x. So what is the location that has the smallest value of h? It is the end of the plate. And this has to make sense because you see, when the fluid enters, it has a lot of juice. You know, go gung ho pushing through with free stream velocity and all that. But then slowly, you see that the viscous effects start building up. And so the module that the fluid comes with is going to keep reducing as it goes further and further along the length of the plate. And eventually, it is just going to give up and say, OK, there is only so much I can do. And so the heat transfer coefficient will fall down in value as you increase the length of the plate, as is evident from there. And the rate of heat transfer keeps getting lower if the temperature is a constant, but that's not the case here, the convective heat flux is a constant. Okay, so the temperature increases as a consequence of that, not the convective heat flux. Either one has to change. The heat transfer coefficient is changing. So what has to change? Either the temperature or the convective heat flux. If the convective heat flux is a constant, and if the heat transfer coefficient changes, the temperature has to change. If the temperature is a constant and the heat transfer coefficient changes, the convective heat flux has to change. Either one of the two scenarios are all that is possible in this problem. Okay, so in this case, H is a maximum <coughs> when X is equal to the total length L, which is 0 0.6 meters. I'm going to take care of uh, this uh, panel here. Okay, a question. It is a minimum basis, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. It's a maximum at the beginning of the plate. And you can see x is equal to 0 is a singularity, so you typically don't start the calculation of the heat transfer coefficient until you're a small differential distance into the length of the plate. Okay? So I have h. And x is equal to L is nu x times 
Kf by x at x is equal to L. Okay? So if I do the substitution, I end up getting the following. So h at x is equal to L. N u x was 0.453. P r to the power 1 by 3, R e x to the power 1 by 2 at x is equal to L divided by L. And I'm going to do all the substitutions now to calculate the S. Ts is t infinity, okay, which is 15 degrees. All of these are in Celsius, so no conversion is question. That is true, I think I ate it up. <laughs> Thanks. I always uh, seem to take it off. Okay, uh, so then I have uh, dq double prime, which is 420. All of this divided by h. The L goes to the numerator once I bring in h. So this is uh, 0.6. Then thermal conductivity of the fluid, I think, was 0 0.0278 something. Multiplied by 0 0.453. 0 0.709 to the power 1 by 3. Please watch out. R e x has to be evaluated at x is equal to L. So this is u infinity times the length L, so that's 0 0.6 by 1 point something, 7225, I think, 10 to the power minus 5 or 4, I'm not sure. 725 10 to the power minus 5, which is the kinematic viscosity. All of this to the power one by two. And bracket close. And just for completion, R E X is U infinity times X by nu the all this is U infinity rho X by mu. If you're given the dynamic viscosity, use this latter. If you're given the kinematic, use the form. So Ts ends up being 104.5 degrees Celsius. Which is good news. This is less than the design uh, criterion. So this is less than. So this design is a permissible one. So we have time to complete the rest of the problem as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take off uh, this particular panel here. Uh, any questions so far on what we've done? Many, many, all the problems are of a similar idea. Uh, these in, involve calculating one of the three quantities, the flux, the heat transfer coefficient, the temperature. Given one, you can calculate the other two, given enough information about the problem. Now, first things first, to perform the next part of the problem, we need to calculate an average temperature of the soft surface of the plate. Okay? So, calculate average Ts the plate. Okay, this is required to perform the rest of the calculations. Average is very similar to how you did the average for uh, the uh, heat transfer coefficient. So Ts <coughs> minus T infinity, this is the average temperature difference. This is equal to 1 by L, 0 to L. integral of the local temperature difference.
But d s minus d infinity is d q convection by h, where h is given in terms of all of those quantities. I'm not substituting x is equal to l here. I'm just leaving everything in terms of x. This is just a local heat transfer coefficient. So this is d q. All of this by 0.453, Franklin to the power 1 by 3, Rex 1 by 2, Kf multiplied by L, where we substituted H times X by Kf was the new self number, which is 0.453. I'll take this off here. I'll just do one more plugging into the integral expression and then we'll go on from there. So T S bar. by L, integral 0 to L when L is 0 0.6. So this is dq double prime. I'm sorry, this is uh, not L, this is x. I apologize. This is supposed to be x because I'm calculating the local heat transfer coefficient. Not at uh, plate length, x is equal to L. Okay. So this is uh, dq multiplied by x and uh, 0.453 PR KF and U infinity X by nu DX. And all these problems will involve a good deal of integration uh, for each and every step because you have the local value, you have to calculate the bulk value. So there are a couple of places where there is x present, and so e bar s minus t infinity. I'm going to take all the constants out. So that's dq double prime convection by L Prandtl number kf u infinity by nu. Integral 0 to L, I have an x to the power 1, x to the power half in the denominator, so this is x to the power half dx. Do the integration, substitute for all the constants, and you end up getting t bar s. approximately 75 degrees Celsius. So obviously this is going to be lower than the maximum temperature on the along the length of the plate because this is the average over all the locations. Okay. <coughs> so now we have our regular problem. 